Broadcasting from Ocean West Studios in America's finest city, this is Tonight in San Diego. This week's guest, owner and founder of Ocean West Studios, Steve Stopper. Your musical guest, Super Groupie. Now here's your host, David Vaughn. You guys ready for tonight's show? Woo! I am, I am, I am. You guys, welcome to the very first ever episode of Tonight in San Diego. Woo! As far as I'm concerned, this show is way overdue for America's finest, the world's finest city. Am I right? Yeah. We're gonna bring you guys every week some amazing guests and some awesome local musical talent. So stay tuned every week, every Thursday, we show this 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I first want to introduce my DJ and assistant, T. Lynn! How are you doing tonight? Yeah? You good? I'm ready to get this started. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. We've been, we've been planning this. We've been sweating. We've been crawling here from long hours, long days. So I... <laughs> All I can say is how excited I am. That's all I, that's all I feel right now. That's all I feel. That's all I feel. So first, you guys, I want to introduce uh, our first segment, which is going to be all about local headlines. The nation's most treasured food item, as we all know, is the McRib. Yes. After ending its 2013 campaign, there is now a website where you can find the leftover McRibs called McRibLocator.com. I actually contacted the website and asked them, you know, how do you find out? They said, well, the local, the local one to you is actually in Poway, California, and we use sophisticated technology that pinpoints the sound of people crying alone and the smell of onsetting diabetes. <laughs> so, I guess it's true. Tourism is up from last year as well in San Diego, which means that tons and tons more people are gonna be missing this sign. <laughs> Oh. Let's see it again. Oh. Who knew who knew the cowardly lion was into water sports? Confiscated heroin packages were found stamped with the words Obamacare on the outside. So so good news, if you missed the deadline, you can still get it from that guy singing his grandmother's Bu Buick with the track marks all over his arm. <laughs> He'll hook you up. A tourist posted on her Facebook as she was walking on a pier and accidentally went over the side and into treacherous midnight waters. Fortunately, she was saved. Unfortunately, her post only got four likes. <laughs> Hashtag sucks to be you. <laughs> A Las Vegas cab driver found $300,000 in the back of his cab recently, and he turned it into police saying he wanted to do the right thing. Yeah. So just in case you're wondering, a cab driver will give you back your $300,000, but he still doesn't know what happened to your cell phone. <laughs> it's definitely not in the pawn shop. You guys, we have an amazing show for you guys tonight. Are you guys excited? Yeah? Yeah, I am too. I am too, I am too, I am too. Super Groupie is here in the house. And our first guest is the owner of this fine establishment. His name is Mr. Steve Stopper and he'll be in tonight. I wanted to give out a special gift to somebody, the very first person to buy a ticket with us. Yes, yes, they are going to be the winner of $25 to Best Buy. Ooh, who was fast? Whose mouse clicked the fastest? We're gonna give it to Miss Christina Torres Perez. Yeah! Congratulations, thank you so much. Thank you for the support. Thank you guys all for the support for being here tonight. Uh, so first, let's head to our brand new segment. It's called Twitter Stock Crashers. <laughs> In the fall, Twitter became a publicly traded company, as most of us know. But what most of us don't know is 
how did Twitter actually rest any of its value? It doesn't really do much advertising and uh, it doesn't really plan to in the future. So where does it rest what it's worth? And it turns out it's actually what you post and what you tweet that matters. So what we're gonna talk about in this segment is what posts made the stocks go up and which posts made the stocks go down. The San Diego Chargers tweeted after they won you know, the last game, win, lose, we move to the next challenge, Bengals week. And of course that made the stocks go skyrocketing up. Until of course, Richard Simmons posted, go San Diego Chargers, hashtag locker room party, hashtag bring back Boltman. Sure they can all get them fit in the locker room. It, <laughs> Oprah wrote on uh, January uh, 1st, in 2014 everybody needs to take some time to listen to your heart. And of course, stocks went up until Miley Cyrus posted later, I named my genital wart Jenny and painted her with pink toenail polish. <laughs> she has so much class. I love it. And surprisingly, Kanye West actually didn't make the stocks go down this time. He made the stocks go substantially up when he wrote in respect to Nelson Mandela, respect to Mandela, his family, and his legacy. But all was lost when Paula Dean tweeted, hashtag RIP Mandela, may you rest in peace in the black part of heaven. She is, she's a gem, a gem. I want my show back. More people, more diabetes. <laughs> so this concludes our segment called Twitter Stock Crashers. What'd you guys think? All right, I want you guys to all give a huge round of applause to our first guest ever in the audience, uh, Mr. Steve Stopper! <laughs> nice. You were the first person to beseech your bottom on that thing. Well, actually, I sat on this earlier oh. when we were moving in, but... Is that what that smell was? Yeah, it's working. It's working. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're amazing. Okay. Hey, thank you so much for having us here. Hi, welcome. No, seriously, because uh, I don't think anybody else likes us. Well, that could be. So, <laughs> so how long have you been in this place? Uh, we've been here about a year and a half, and so when we started this place, I was an audio video contractor and decided to do something with the arcs. So we started a nonprofit school in here, and we're going to have a bunch of interns work these things, and we're doing this show, and we're doing other stuff here, so it's, it's good. Fantastic. I heard you, you've had some famous bands here. Yeah, there's been a lot of bands that come through here over the years. This place was, about, it was built in the 80s. Um, I think Blink-182 was here for a while, a couple of other bands. There's some bands that are local right now, but I can't say because their record deals aren't nailed in yet, so <laughs> we'll see. That's awesome. And, and, and I heard uh, you know, a, a very popular and uh, 90s sitcom, or 90s Oh yeah, they, uh, they had uh, silk stockings. This was a Ooh. TV place. Stu Siegel had some stuff in here, so there's uh, silk stockings. For those me. kids uh, out there who do not know what silk stockings is, it's that thing that you were not allowed to watch uh, uh, when you were uh, 11 years old, but you did when your parents went home. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's trash TV. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Joy Z Shore, right? Uh, and then you also you but you brought a clip with you today, right? Yeah, we have a clip we can show. This is uh, a little tour of the place. Hello, I'm Steve Stopper. I'm the founder of the School for Creative Careers, and I want to tell you a little bit about how the school began. I've been an audio video contractor here in San Diego for over 20 years, and we've always had technology in our offices. We've had little TV studios, things that mimic what we do in schools and in the other areas that we install. And we finally decided we wanted to build something that was really out of this world, and that's what this place is. It's a connection of every type of technology we can get our hands on, including some of the newest and latest and greatest. Uh, it also is uh, a place that we built so that students can come in and get a chance to play around uh, with the real thing. The School for Creative Careers is a one-of-a-kind place. Every topology that a student might do in the arts is available here for them to get an experience in the real world with. We have an art gallery. We have four recording studios. We have video editing. We have the ability to do a live television broadcast with multi-camera shoots. We have vintage equipment, collectible items. We have a uh, 
Cadillac mixing board, famous from the uh, family opera custom built. We have microphones that Paul McCartney has used. We have every aspect of the technologies that are being used in today's working environment. In this environment, working professionals are here. They volunteer their time for students to get a chance and a taste of what it's like to work in a real environment. We have vintage guitar collections. We have vintage microphones. We have current state-of-the-art digital recording technology. We have four studios that allow different areas of, uh, to be worked on at the same time. Our art gallery tries to support uh, people that are dealing with art and graphics that are, that are related to the music industry or television industry. We also have a working classroom that's able to view whatever's going on in any of those studios and, and so p uh, students can learn in that environment over there. Whether you're a student, interested in a career, if you're a working professional wanting to volunteer your time, if you're a, a teacher willing to volunteer your time, or you're just interested in learning more about us, look up www.schoolforcreativecareers.org and find out where you can get involved. Thanks. That says it all right there. It does, and you do a lot it of... It says more than it should, actually, but... <laughs> you do a lot of uh, philanthropy, too, so we really appreciate you doing that for uh, the, for the uh, youth in, in San Diego, which well, we thanks. need more people doing music stuff as far as I'm concerned well, thanks. in San Diego. So thank you so much for everything. Thank you for hosting us. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, it's great having you on tonight, okay, Steve. Uh, Thank great. you so much. Thanks. Right, we'll be right after this, uh, back with Super Groupie. <laughs> Stay tuned. You guys, I want you to welcome to the stage, local San Diego band, Super Group Partake of the couch. Cool. And then the, yep, yeah, you can climb over that however you feel. This is nice. Is this how it's Straddle this it. Is this how you guys wanted it? You actually, Whoa, there's actually a trampoline you're supposed to jump. Oh. Yes. What are you doing? Uh, it's just straight vodka. <laughs> Dang, this couch. And, 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 the, and the tears of people who ate Nick Ray. All right, guys, so I listened to some of your songs, which I, I definitely a fan of now. Definitely oh, a fan. Sick. Um, so, but I noticed you guys talk a lot about a couple of, the only things you guys seem to talk about. <laughs> like what? What, yeah. is you what, are you, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are your inspirations? <laughs> or what is your inspiration? Would you say like musically or like in just lyrically? In general? Lyrically. Lyrically. Yeah. lyrically. Um, this guy has some interesting lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> real life. Probably. Real trill life. Trill life. Trill life. The yeah. triller. Um, <laughs> Uh, trail is know, a man. combination just, of know, true and real. Living in living in San Diego, living in California, some crazy shit happens. So, <laughs> you know, you just try to draw from that and try to be as animated as you can about about what shit just happened. You know what I mean? So <laughs> sometimes we just go out just to get into trouble, and it winds up being a song. So, <laughs> who who have you guys? You guys have opened for some cool bands too. Yeah, I mean, we played with Swayze a couple yeah. times. Uh, we used to play a lot with Unwritten Law, which is uh, Kaylin Russo's father, you know, yeah, Scott, Scott Russo. Yeah. He, uh, he's the leader of that group. So they mm -hmm. took us on some uh, shows a few times. And that was really cool. It was different, though, for us because they were all punk rock, you know, and they had their diehard bands and we're like, you know, singing pop songs. And, uh, <laughs> that was bad. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was yeah, we were like, stuff like that. Pre but uh, it was yeah. good because we got our feet wet and all that stuff like yeah. that. But um, <laughs> I mean, we could, we'd like to play with a lot of people, you know, I mean. Mike Posner. I love to play with Lil John. Yeah, every yes. time. What's he doing these days? I don't know what he's doing. He's, uh, he's uh, studying. Uh, he's an English major. Yeah, yeah I think Cambridge. he's going back to school. He's Cambridge. very intelligent man. Yes. He's working. Or he's with, going to school. <laughs> he's working with Webster to get his face next to the word yeah. Yes. <laughs> he hey. invented the word yeah. Yes. Or at least made it acceptable to say in public. Yeah, yeah. Before he yeah. came along, it was just one of those exclamation points. Yeah. Now yes. it's the actual word. Yes. No one knew what to say. In that situation. <laughs> uh, so where do you guys get your name from? You know, that's another interesting story too. Um, well, basically, um, to sum it all up really short, it was basically 
it was a group of four us. It was uh, Scott Russo, a rapper named Mickey Avalon, and the uh, singer Cisco Adler from Swayze. Remember, it was that white guy in Swayze? Yeah. Uh, he, that was Cisco. And uh, our original name was Antique. And I guess we just couldn't use it because of some copyrights and stuff Swedish like that. Swedish band took it. <laughs> yeah, it was, I guess it was a Swedish group before us. Those Swedes. Swedes yeah. Man. Swedish fish. They're, sneaky as hell. They're good, though. <laughs> so basically, we liked the name. We asked Scott Russo because we were working with him at the time. And their group had disbanded because of some record contract uh, regulations or something. So he said, yeah, you can use it. And we just ran with it. Mm -hmm. Probably get sued for the name or something. <laughs> I don't know. But That's awesome. Card Reader once said it was a very powerful name. Well, tell them the story about the, tell them the alien story. The alien story? How yeah. about you guys got? Su you super have an alien is, oh. story. Super oh. groupie is like, yes. it's more than, Go it's ahead. an embodiment Go of ahead. culture and life. Go and ahead, Padawan. Well, you got to tell. I, I'm, always, I'm the introduction. You have to get all the details. No. I'm just dropping the thesis. You got to say it now. Who was probed? <laughs> all, all of us. <laughs> That's the real Next question. question. <laughs> I'm going to get my, uh, <laughs> what I do with my. <laughs> Who wasn't <laughs> probed? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, maybe that'll be an enigma for now. You want to hit? You want to get a hit of that? An enigma. You guys are clearly <laughs> hilarious. You guys have tons of energy, and I cannot wait to see you guys on the stage in a few moments. Yes. What about you guys? You guys excited to see Super Groupie? <laughs> All right. After this, we are going to have Super Groupie hit the stage. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, everybody, I want you to welcome to the stage Super Groupie. You can hear their latest new EP from Pacific Records. Take it away, Super Groupie!
San Diego. Next week's guest is going to be Energy 103.7's Dorothy Tran. And we've also got Higher Ground Music Media and Jesse Johnson as our musical guest. Give it up one more time for Super Groupie! You moving now, I treat this music like my job, so what is you about? Maybe I'm insecure, maybe I'm indecisive, maybe I need to just pick up that pen and fucking write it. Sometimes I wonder, I see that cause I got to light it. How about you cut my heart open and you just look inside it? They see us pacing in the lane Pacing around the game like we was waiting for a train If nothing ever changes, then it all remains the same So when that clock strikes 12, do not say my name Sing it! 